and his successor who is working on matching his record, Loretta Lynch. She, according to the fired director of the FBI, obstructed justice in ordering James Comey to refer to the Clinton email investigation as a matter rather than an investigation for the purpose of allowing the Clinton campaign to deny the Democratic nominee was under federal investigation. Today, we learned of the prospect of additional corruption on the part of the Obama Justice Department at issue why Attorney General Lynch went to almost unprecedented lengths to permit a Russian attorney to enter the country without a visa, long before meeting Donald Trump Jr. and Jared Kushner, not the first scandal to plague that agency, of course. This meeting took place on June 9th of last year. But it is unclear now not only why A.G. Lynch would have given her an extraordinary waiver of U.S. immigration laws, but how that Russian attorney could have been in the country some five months after the expiration of that so-called immigration parole waiver. The Senate Judiciary Committee is now investigating Lynch's efforts to protect Hillary Clinton and the role of not only A.G. Lynch, but the fired FBI director as well. There is much to learn about the collusion between the Russian attorney and the Obama administration. But the political motivations of the Obama Department of Justice are readily recognized. It is all, all about partisan politics. In fact, of the more than $400,000 in donations to Clinton and Trump during the election from DOJ employees, 97% of their money went to Hillary Clinton. Special counsel Robert Mueller isn't even looking at the obvious misdeeds of the Obama Justice Department itself, and it's clear the Washington swamp will never be drained unless we the people demand the truth, and yes, something called justice. Special counsel Robert Mueller continues to build something of a dream team of Clinton sympathizers and apologists for his Russia probe, so-called. Mueller's latest choice, the FBI official who oversaw the disastrous Hillary Clinton email investigation. Yeah, that's right, folks. You cannot make this up. Former prosecutor Peter Strezak interviewed Clinton back in July. Three days later, director, then director, James Comey said no charges would be filed. He is also, of course, an Obama donor. For more now on the Russia probe, the battle over health care on Capitol Hill, if that battle hasn't already been decided, we're joined by Kimberly Guilfoyle, co-host of the five former, well, she's an attorney, former, former prosecutor, <laughs> there you go, yeah. and, and to our good fortune, co-host of the five. Thank it's, you so much. Th let's start with what is the president going to do here? He is being assailed on all sides. Yes. And and he has Speaker Ryan, uh, Mitch McConnell, the majority leader, acting as if this is just uh, political business as usual. Isn't it remarkable? He's having to battle the people in his own party. They've promised him the world and delivered absolutely nothing. This is the problem here. So you further see his presidency being undermined, even though he handed them the House, handed them the Senate, took over the Oval. You think they'd be able to get something done. But he's battling even harder with the people in his own party, and the people in the party leaders are supposed to begin. But listen, still it seems the president has some level of you know, optimism about this and saying that Mitch McConnell has to get this mm -hmm. done. Right. So what is Paul got Ryan about three doing? Weeks to get it done. Right. And, and what is Mitch McConnell doing to make sure I, apparently he's working on it, but why is it this difficult? Why is it that people are behaving in the way they are and now they're just, you know, mishmashing this whole plan to a point where it's like unrecognizable. It's it's really remarkable to think about how passive aggressive the performance has been of Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell. Uh, and, and you have to believe this is not their best possible work. Uh, I, I mean, Ryan... You wouldn't fails. add it to the resume? Well, yeah. I, I don't think they should. No, <laughs> they should not. And, and I think it's also very difficult for most Americans who voted for uh, Donald Trump to watch him being treated this way. Yes. And to not have I an agree. administration that's filled out with warriors who can support him and advance his agenda and... and his communication, I mean, we can go through the list of 
places where there have been missed opportunities. Uh, it, it's just... It, well, he needs to revamp communications, that's for sure. Right. Um, and certainly he needs to get some of these spots filled because he's got, like, I won't even say a lean, mean army. I mean, it's just lean, and it's leaning back in the wrong direction. He needs, like like you said, warriors in there, and he certainly needs a wartime conciliere, if you know what I mean, right. to run the operation and make sure that things get done. Because right now, it's like... And, and the, and the I, don't, I, don't, I don't blame him. I mean, you know, sure, sure, I think he could do something to make ensure to get some better people in charge to help him put forward his proposals. <laughs> I know that he's a man that's frustrated about this because he wants to get these things done. And he's had success in his past with being able to be the CEO and make sure that stuff gets seen through. And it is still, at this point, such a young administration, mm -hmm. not even six months uh, long uh, in office. He's accomplished so much, We've, and he, but he's also raised expectations so egregiously. Accomplished so much against uh, unbelievable as, odds. And as you point out, even against his own, the opposition yeah. of his own party. Where do we go from here? When you cannot even get the, uh, the Attorney General of the United States, his appointee, to investigate the Clinton Foundation, the Clinton emails, and to start righting these wrongs. I mean, if there's collusion, it's obvious now the collusion is between, uh, if, if there were collusion, it's between uh, Russia mm -hmm. uh, and, the, and the Obama administration. No one's doing anything about that now, are they? I think that he needs to get his Justice Department to get on board and do a proper investigation and, in fact, just like follow through on the facts and the evidence that are there. I think he needs to put somebody, you know, up against it that should be because there's too many free passes around here. And instead, they're just like harping on. No more Mr. Don nice Jr. No, I think it's enough already. Yeah. Kimberly Killers Gilfoyle. in there. Thanks so much. <laughs> Appreciate it. Turning back to the latest uh, shocking developments concerning the Russian attorney uh, meeting with Donald Trump Jr., our next guest saw her on Capitol Hill in June of last year. Joining us tonight is Congressman Ron DeSantis, a member of several key committees, including Foreign Affairs, Judiciary and Oversight, also a member of the Freedom Caucus. Good to have you with us, Congressman. The, Good, night. Good evening. The, the pictures of this woman uh, being there so long ago, uh, it, it is just stunning to see how the national left-wing media ran with this story without any idea of what they were talking about when it came to the issue of collusion and the role of this attorney. Your thoughts tonight? Well, Lou, she has been in the Congress. You pointed out that hearing in 2016. She was heavily involved, and that was before I actually got sworn in, but they voted in the lame duck in 2012 on the Magnitsky Act, and she was lobbying a lot of people. I've talked to some of my colleagues who remember that. I guarantee you she lobbied more Democrats than Republicans. So she's been here. And then, of course, Loretta Lynch approved her to be here on this special parole. And the question is, is why? The media is acting like she's Putin's right-hand woman being sent here to collude and do all these crazy things. Well, if that were the case, why on earth would the Obama administration have wanted her to be in the country? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and, and another uh, important question in all of this is, why is the attorney general the one giving this special uh, uh, immigration parole, a, a very rare waiver, and by statute it's uh, the, the purview of the Homeland Security Secretary. It, it's stunning about what, how Loretta Lynch or why Loretta Lynch was personally involved in this, don't you think? Yes, and we need to get answers from that. Lynch is in a lot of hot water anyways, right. and I've been arguing to bring her in, put her under oath. And it could be our committee on oversight. It could be the intelligence committees. But she's, she's already out there. She needs to be brought in. She needs to be deposed about this matter as well. You know, as a member of the House Judiciary Committee, I want to quickly turn to uh, the FBI nominee, uh, director nominee, uh, Christopher Wray. Talk about the independence of the FBI. Uh, and, and I am talking with a number of attorneys, whether Greg Jarrett, whether it be uh, any, any number of attorneys. Uh, it's just an absurdity. Why is this being asserted first by James Comey and now by Christopher Wray when, in fact, the FBI, FBI is not an independent agency of any sort or kind? 
No, and, and exactly. Now, it's one thing to say, look, I'm going to be guided by law and not politics. I'm going to be independent of kind of the political winds. That's fine. But I think Comey asserted, uh, implicitly at least, that he was independent of any accountability. And that's exactly what you don't want in government. He is an inferior, the FBI director is an inferior officer in the executive branch. And if you say it's independent, then that would mean back when J. Edgar Hoover was um, investigating Martin Luther King Jr., would it have been improper for a president like John F. Kennedy to say, don't do that, you're violating the man's rights? I think we want to have a system in which the FBI director can be held accountable when they're not performing adequately. And certainly that is uh, the system and the, and the reality of the matter, uh, that uh, you know, the, the FBI director may not want to have dinner with the president, but that isn't going to be his choice. He may have other choices, but that won't be one of them. Uh, he works for the president. He works for the attorney general. Yeah, that's right. And what the Democrats want, though, is they want to create this situation where the FBI director is constantly being told to basically go to war with the administration right. in order to show you're independent. And, and that is not the, the proper role either. You follow yeah. the law and you aggressively enforce the law, but you don't try to align yourself against your own president just to please the other party and the media. And I have to say, I think the Senate Judiciary Committee, I, you know, I think uh, I've got great respect uh, for Senator uh, Chuck Grassley, but I have to tell you, he turned over that committee to the Democratic Party as if they were in leadership uh, and in control of the U.S. Senate. Uh, an awful mistake, in my opinion. Congressman, as always, it's great to see you, and thanks for being with us and uh, sharing your views. We appreciate it. Formal inquiry into whether Hillary Clinton and her aides mishandled classified information. If Mrs. Clinton is found to have violated government protocols, the former Secretary of State and her aides could have their access to sensitive government documents terminated. Joining me right now with his thoughts on all of it, former governor of Arkansas and Fox News contributor Mike Huckabee. Governor, good to have you here. So, you know, the left has been pursuing this narrative for months now, right? I mean, absolutely. From, from the time of the campaign itself, they had this whole idea about collusion in Russia. And guess what? There doesn't seem to be any there there. They haven't come up with anything of any importance. And so now they're going after him on something else, this whole obstruction of justice theory. And they're out there bringing on attorneys that have, uh, well, shall we say, liberal leanings that have donated repeatedly to campaigns on the left, including Hillary Clinton. What is it going to take for them to give this one up? I, I don't think anything is going to cause them to give it up. The, the Democrats right now, Trish, are like the little boy that was out in the woods. He had a rifle slung over his shoulder like he was hunting, and a guy said, hey, son, what are you hunting for? He said, I don't know. I haven't found it yet. That's the Democrats right now. They don't know what they're hunting for. They're just hunting. They've got to find something because they cannot accept the results of the election. And really, that's what this is about. Uh, Governor, They've not been able to tie anything with Russia or any of these right. other charges. It's, it's just really nonsense. But, Governor, you, you got, you got uh, Robert Mueller, okay, who is James Comey's buddy. And Mr. Mueller goes out, and he, he's assembling his team, and he has to somehow find all of these people that have done, five of them, have donated to Democratic campaigns. I mean, did he have to have those people? Could he have not gone and chosen folks that didn't have a political bent? I mean, when you start to put all this together, if I were the president of the United States and I got James Comey's buddy and he's going out collecting a bunch of people that had, had donated to, to the left, I might be pretty darn worried about where they're going with this because it doesn't seem, frankly, fair. Well, Mr. Mueller had asked me to be a part of the uh, force to investigate, but then he found out I've never given any contributions to the Clintons or to the Clinton Foundation, so I was uh, asked to no longer be considered. You know, I'm being <laughs> facetious, but Trish, the truth is this whole thing already smells worse than a big warm pile of donkey droppings. I mean, something here uh, just doesn't smell right. If you think about that so many of the people who are supposedly objective investigators are people who are partisan contributors. I mean, it's one thing to be a voter to a Democrat, but when you start shelling out thousands of dollars, then you're pretty committed to that point of view. And to say that you're going to come into this investigation and be totally divorced from your contributions, 
I think that's a big stretch. Most of us are not that divorced from where our money has gone, and I don't think we're going to see it in this investigation. Uh, and, and, Governor, I keep going back to this reality, which is the fact that James Comey was fired. He had plenty of opportunities to say something, to raise a red flag, to say, I'm concerned about obstruction of justice before he got fired. But no, he waited until he was fired. And then he didn't do the proper thing. He didn't sit down with a journalist and actually come forward on the record and talk about this. No, he called his friend who then leaked it to the New York Times. And interestingly enough, the one thing, Governor, that was never leaked was the fact that the president wasn't under investigation at the time. So does this, I, I mean, what does this tell you about exactly what, what's going on there within within that White House and the holdovers from previous administrations that just don't like the new president. Trish, I think there's more evidence that I personally kidnapped the Lindbergh baby in the 1920s, 30 years before my birth, than there is that Donald Trump had any collusion with Russians or that somehow he has obstructed justice by a legal definition. But that's the kind of atmosphere that Washington has created but let's, let's be real clear. This is not because somebody honestly believes Donald Trump has done something wrong. This is all about keeping him uh, distracted, keeping him totally consumed with having to defend himself so that he can't get something done. And as I've often said, many of his critics, they're not afraid that he will fail. They're afraid he will succeed. And if he succeeds, then the things that he has been pushing for, which lower taxes, better jobs, a different trade agreement, a stronger America to foreign governments, uh, that scares some of the people who don't want that kind of an America, but there are many of us who do. Joining me now, co-host of the Fox News specialist, Ebony Williams, and host of the Mike Gallagher radio show on the Salem Radio Network, Fox News contributor, Mike Gallagher. Great to have you both with us. Thank Hello. You. Let's, let's start with Jay Sekulow on this show laying out uh, what I thought was one of the strongest defenses of the president's position and demolished, uh, just demolished uh, Bob Mueller in the, in the idiot democratic uh, cronyism uh, in the legal profession, the deep state judiciary. That's just my objective opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Mr. Lou Dobbs, I love it. Just, you know, I can't really tell what side of this you fall on, Lou. Well, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. Well, I'm, I'm going to give you a hint. <laughs> Truth, justice, and the American, American way. way. We, should, we should all have a Jay Sekulow in our corner. I mean, oh President God. Trump is very well served by Mr. Sekulow, and you're right. He kind of demolishes it piece by piece. Um, this is, listen, this is war. This is warfare. The president is under siege. Uh, and he needs some of the best and the you brightest. Know, I'm, I'm asking uh, out loud here, why aren't uh, the churches, why aren't all of the folks who supported this president, why aren't they coming together and demanding Mueller go away, demanding that uh, Ryan uh, and McConnell end this nonsense? Because I... this is just nasty. Uh, it, it is futile. It is useless. It's awful. I have an idea, Lou. I think you have to look at some of the tweets from some of the GOP. You have to look at the May 17th tweet from Mr. Newt Gingrich, Speaker Gingrich, who at first came out and says, you know, well, Mueller's a great guy of integrity and honesty. And then after the Comey testimony... Yeah, they said testimony, the same damn thing, of if course, I may use go the for expression. It. Go for they it. said the same thing about James Comey. Comey, I know. I said from the moment, the moment mm -hmm. he was considered uh, is, you know, that, uh, you know, it was ridiculous. Uh, because sure. he's always cited with the Democrats in every conflict, every contest in public service. Register Republican, though. Right. What might I, I add? And I know that doesn't always mean. Register any way you want. Does, it doesn't always mean. I, I know. A lot of registered Republicans. Watch what those They call them rhinos do. for a reason, <laughs> reason, right? Well, no, but I do think, Lou, this gets to the heart of your question as to why some people don't really know what to make of it, right? Because they're hearing this from, from some people, but hearing objectivity and, and honesty and integrity from others. And if you're somebody, Lou, that wants to feel like there's such a thing as still an objective person in Washington, D.C., see where does one look We're to find the, that what the hell is wrong with such a person are, are you kidding me I know. 
all of this is uncharted territory, though, because we're, we're dealing, admittedly, with a president who doesn't play by the rules that they want him to play by. Hell, he wasn't and elected to play by their damn that's, rules. That's why, we, that's why he was elected, and, and, and everybody gets it, but everybody's afraid of this volatile day-to-day, -day, you know, um, narrative. Nobody knows how to play we this. We knew that this man was, was going to be the answer to everyone who is praying for a disruptor to take over in Washington, D.C. By the way, liberals as well as conservatives, Republicans, and Democrats, independents. Here he is disrupting, not playing. You know, he's, it's as if he lost his rights to the First Amendment. Uh, it, he can't speak the way he wants. He cannot tweet. Who are these fools who think that they can impose this kind of... Uh, uh, these kind of shackles on him. Well, you know, change is difficult, Lou, and that's the thing. You're right. The American people elected Donald J. Trump. The disruptor style is something personally. I didn't vote for President Trump, but that's the aspect of him I like, that disruptor thing <laughs> that says Washington's well, going to be it. different. Yeah. We got it. And what it feels like, though, I think is very uncomfortable for a lot of people. And it's not only uncomfortable, but the bottom line is that every day, that, I, I ask my radio audience all the time, you think you should stop the tweets? I get as many Democrats who call in and say, no, you shouldn't. Right. That's what we want. Was that my you know, mom she, again? Twice. Was that my mom I again? She her, always does we that. We put a limit on <laughs> Well, call your people, show. I know, right? people feeling uncomfortable. Yes. Think how uncomfortable those people felt under eight years of America is nothing more than a, you know, a, a trash bin, mm -hmm. uh, that there is no such thing as American exceptionalism. Under this president, we're hearing for the first time for many Americans mm -hmm. that this is America first, that make America great again. He is a truly aspirational president, but he's not doing it according to the very people he ran against. Well, the elites, I was going to say, the, the establishment, the, the orthodoxy of the status the quo. The thing about America first, Lou, is where does that leave Washington? Mm. Well, you know what I mean? Behind. In, and, and they in got a the problem. Dust, in the, the dust. In the dust. Washington. Washington. Oh, oh, I don't think That's you have my to point. about Washington. That's my no, point. No, no. You're right. And, and, and again, at the end of the day, he's blowing it all up, and that's, that's what they want. Despite fast and furious, the IRS targeting scandal, Benghazi, Clinton's emails, the Clinton Foundation, no special counsel. What so different this time? Dems, the left-wing national media, the deep state, enabling complicit rhinos, have decided to steal the Trump White House that they lost in November and to destroy this president. But President Trump is both calm in the face of his enemies and defiant in the face of their attacks. President Trump acknowledges he is the subject of the single greatest witch hunt of a politician in American history. But he is clearly committed to delivering his agenda for the American people. The president today told reporters the appointment of Robert Mueller as special counsel hurts our country terribly. Adding, quote, it also happens to be a pure excuse for the Democrats having lost an election that they should have easily won because of the Electoral College being slanted so much in their way. That's all this is. The president's comments come as Democratic senators heard Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein admit he knew FBI Director James Comey would be fired before he wrote his memo. What motivates this Deputy Attorney General? It's all very hard to figure as things stand tonight, but we will try. Fox News Chief White House Correspondent John Roberts with our report. Lou, President Trump said this afternoon he is close to naming a new FBI director, and sources tell Fox News that the leading candidate for the position is the former Connecticut Senator Joe Lieberman. Many Republicans believe that Lieberman would get universal confirmation in the Senate, but at least two Democratic senators, Claire McCaskill of Missouri and Patrick Leahy of Vermont, say it would be a mistake to name someone to that position with a political background. Still, nominating Joe Lieberman to be the FBI director could help turn around a relentlessly negative news cycle that has been surrounding the president. In the East Room today with Colombia's President Santos, President Trump responded for the first time in person to the appointment much. of a special prosecutor to look into Russia's attempts to influence the U.S. election. I respect the move, but the entire thing has been a witch hunt, and uh, there is no collusion between certainly myself and my campaign 
but I can always speak for myself and the Russians. While the president said he respected the decision to appoint former FBI Director Robert Mueller to look into the matter, he also denounced it as bad for the nation. I think it divides the country. I think we have uh, a very divided country because of that and many other things. Uh, so I can tell you that uh, we...
they are at war with this administration and with this president. And ever since November 8th, as soon as the returns came in and he was president-elect, you know, they've been trying to destroy him even before he took office and now. Um, and so they create this frenzy of, oh, my gosh, there was a contact, maybe a bit of contact. Anonymous sources, of course. We never have anyone speaking for the record. We never have any actual documents. Uh, but it's story after story. The Dems get in a tizzy, all this other stuff. And I think the deputy AG, I just think that he um, he caved and, and, and did this um, because he Is was he taking a lot of... as being a weak person is he this intellectually this uh, is he so bereft of principle that he acquiesces to uh, the popular opinion of the national left-wing media i mean good lord almighty well Can i'm gonna he, ask him we need actually we need an independent counsel on his conduct his <laughs> principles and his values so i we're, i'm gonna ask him about this tomorrow if i hope House Speaker Ryan today claimed the appointment of a special counsel won't interfere with any of four congressional investigations now underway. We are going to keep these investigations going here. And so these bipartisan, bicameral investigations, House Intelligence Committee, Senate Intelligence Committee are going to continue their investigation. 
But Congress proving to be ineffective in investigations, no matter the committee, no matter the subject of the investigations, congressional investigations have led to exactly nothing other than waste over the past eight years. The House Oversight Committee spent $26 million investigating between 2011 and 2014, including the Internal Revenue Service, and spending $24 million on the targeting probe, Congress spending another $8 million on the Benghazi Select Committee. We all know how that wound up. All that money, no resolution to any of their investigations. My next guest has been fighting for extreme transparency on the uh, Obama-era scandals. Joining us now to discuss the appointment of a special counsel, the deep state's uh, efforts to subvert the presidency of Donald Trump, Chris Farrell. He's the director of investigations, research at Judicial Watch. Chris, it is great to have you with us. Thank you, Lou. I, I, I mean, why does Congress, I, well, I know the answer to the question. I have to stop myself short. Why should we put up a Congress that does investigations just to create a circus and showtime so they can get their faces before their constituents and achieve nothing else? You nailed it. It's a kabuki theater and it's uh it's soundbite time for the next uh, you know, campaign ad. What we really need are grand juries. We need more grand juries considering indictments of people and less hot air on Capitol Hill. Well, it's the Republicans are utterly contemptuous. held held accountable. You know what the answer is, Lou? The answer is for President Trump to engage in extreme transparency. Mm -hmm. Remember, he talked about extreme vetting right. for people coming out of hot spots in, in terrorist areas. We need extreme transparency. You know, with the stroke of a pen, the president and all of his cabinet secretaries can release all the documents and records that they're currently fighting us over in court. So whether it's the FBI 302s of their interview of the president, Valerie Jarrett and Rahm Emanuel about Rod Blagojevich's selling of Obama's Senate seat, right. whether it's the Hillary Clinton email, email scandal, whether it's the State Department records and documents about Benghazi, with a stroke of the pen, the president or his cabinet secretaries can stop fighting us and release all of those documents just like Obama released the Bush administ administration so-called torture memos. He's free to do it. And frankly, if he did, it would radically alter the media drumbeat because they couldn't ignore these stories. Right. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, extreme transparency is called for. I think let's it's get, a wonderful idea. Let's get some idea. accountability. Have you put that proposal before uh, the White House in any fashion? Uh, I've communicated it today uh, on, to, our, on our website. Uh, uh, no, no, and, no. And, come on. Let's not be oblique. Uh, I, I'll tell you what. I'll call... I'll
entire thing has been a witch hunt, and uh, there is no collusion. I think we have uh, a very divided country because of that and many other things. That's the subject of my commentary coming up here next. Much more straight ahead, much of which is likely to frustrate even, well, annoy you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. A few thoughts now on the appointment of a special counsel and the utter hypocrisy being uh, spewed by the left-wing national media and the Dems, both now waging a war after remaining silent for eight years during the Obama administration. Article 2, Section 3 of the Constitution charges the president shall, quote, take care that the laws be faithfully executed. But Obama's constitutional legacy is simply devastating. Flagrant lies, cover-ups, scandals were the norm uh, throughout. Use the IRS to prosecute political opponents and Tea Party nonprofits, clear violations of federal law. Yet, the Justice Department allowed IRS official Lois Lerner to walk. So did Congress, for that matter. The Obama administration's fast and furious gun-running operation armed violent criminals south of the border. Obama tried to use his executive privilege to deny access to documents, and Attorney General Holder simply lied and ultimately was held in contempt of Congress. But beyond that, no consequence. The Obama administration, Hillary Clinton, other officials engaging in a Benghazi cover-up, blaming, do you remember, a silly YouTube video for a terrorist attack. The Hillary Clinton email scandal connected to broader claims of corruption. the FBI to check their server even after being told the Russians uh, had hacked them. Eight years of a scandal plagued Obama administration and never ever a special prosecutor. No articles of impeachment, no one charged with any wrongdoing. Mr. Trump is correct. What he is watching unfold around him is a witch hunt. In my view, what we are witnessing is nothing less than an attempt at a coup of the Trump White House. The left and the deep state are trying to steal the Trump presidency, and they should be consigned, in my opinion, to an appropriate place for their efforts. We'll see. Now the quotation of the evening, this one from President John F. Kennedy, who said, The great enemy of the truth is very often not the lie, deliberate, contrived, and dishonest, but the myth, persistent, persuasive, and unrealistic. For example, the myth that all that is sought through the special counsel is merely truth and justice, when the opposite is the real objective. We're coming right back. Chairman of Fox News passed away this morning. He was 77. Roger was a television pioneer. He was a brilliant political strategist. He worked on the presidential campaigns of Nixon, Reagan, George H.W. Bush. Roger changed the face of cable news when he executed the vision of Rupert Murdoch and launched Fox News in 1996. Murdoch, the executive chairman of 21st Century Fox, the founder of so many, many media companies, issued this statement today. 
A brilliant broadcaster, Roger played a huge role in shaping America's media over the last 30 years. He'll be remembered by the many people on both sides of the camera that he discovered, nurtured, and promoted. Roger and I shared a big idea, which he executed in a way no one else could have. In addition, Roger was a great patriot who never ceased fighting for his beliefs. Roger Ailes, an extraordinary American, patriot, and great friend. To Beth and Zachary, our very best. Our next guest says Roger Ailes was an extraordinary leader who also fought courageously for causes and the people he believed in. Joining me now to discuss the impact that Roger had on American politics and television, the veteran of 10 presidential campaigns, Republican strategist, Fox News contributor, the Dean, Ed Rollins. Ed, uh, it's a terrible moment. Uh, you brightened it a bit with what you wrote today. Uh, this uh, an extraordinary man. This was... Uh... He was an extraordinary man, and, and, and he, his, his whole career was mentoring. He was the very best at whatever he did. He was the very best when he was a political consultant. He did the media side of it, uh, elected some of the great people, including Mitch McConnell, uh, elected presidents, uh, started 28 years old, uh, giving advice and counsel, and Nixon taught Nixon how to deal with uh, in 1984, when I was running Reagan's campaign, I took an all-star team of advertising guys who'd never been near a campaign. I put Roger in charge of it. Uh, he taught him how to do politics, uh, uh, a campaign with no negativity whatsoever, won uh, 49 states, and he was very much a critical player. We should point out, he was capable of a oh, negative he could, campaign. Oh, he could, well. he, could, he, could, he could fire with the best of them, uh, and, and, and he trained a whole group of young people who, uh, because he understood the message, he understood how to communicate. But I think at, at his core, he was, he, he loved this country deeply. He loved the conservative mm -hmm. causes. He felt that for a long, long time, uh, and why he created this network, uh, is that the, the, conservative, the conservative point of view was not being heard. Uh, and, and you have to remember, he founded CNBC, he founded MSNBC, it was American Talking before that, uh, mm -hmm. came over in a court, in the course of a very short period of time. Can you just imagine the shuddering oh. by Rachel Maddow as you've said that? Uh, well, it's life, you know, at the end of the day, uh, 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 I'm not sure if he and was... Good, and that is uh, what is so great, Roger, uh, he created a lot of trouble for the left, and well, he, he reveled in it. He, he, and, and as I said in the piece, he was a man of courage. He was, uh, he, 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 he was a bleeder, and so he always had to be careful, but he never was careful. He, I mean, he was, I, several times I was in rooms with him when it looked like it was going to be a fist fight, and I said, now, Roger, you, you can't get a bloody nose. We'll basically have to take you to the hospital. He said, yeah, well, I'll take them to the hospital first. I mean, he was a real fighter, two-fisted guy, and, and a wonderful human being and a great, and, great friend. I'm privileged to have had him as a friend. Absolutely, and uh, I'm sure that he felt exactly the same way toward you. We're kind of back-to-back -back old, brawl, old barroom brawlers. <laughs> we took out of politics. So. And, 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 I, and, if, and if I may say, uh, some people might have said hemophiliac. They might have said any number of things, but uh, an old fighter, if I can call you that, calls it what it was, and Roger would be perfectly pleased with the, the word choice, bleeder. Uh, he... he but he made more folks. I mean, he oh. bruised up more folks than whoever got him. He he he, he was never intimidated by that by that uh, you know health and, and obviously he had lots of health problems the last few years. And, and as I said in the piece, courage was his defining. He had great courage. He was willing to take on any issue that he felt strongly about and and basically made a big contribution to this country. And again, our sympathies and condolences uh, to his wife Beth you and to their story. son Zach. Uh, right. Our very best. Ed Rollins, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Great. Up next, Senator Cornyn warning that all the congressional investigations on Russian interference are what he called a train wreck waiting to happen. I'll take up the deep state's war against this president with Scott Ulinger here next. Stay with us. Joining me now, former CIA operations officer Scott Ulinger and back with us, Ed Rollins. Uh, let me start with you, if I may, Scott. This is...